Hello, Dreamcatchers, and welcome to another exciting day in the Writer's Haven. I am your host, V. Helena, and today I am so excited about having award-winning author K.L. Brady here to chat about her latest spy thriller and romance novels. As many of you know, I love a good thriller, and K.L. does not disappoint. Join me in welcoming K.L. Brady to the Haven. Hello, K.L. K.L., again, welcome to the Writer's Haven. It is such a pleasure to have you here. Um, such an accomplished writer. You've been in the game since 2009, 16 books under your belt. What was the start of your writer's journey? What inspired you to become a writer? Uh, heartbreak, actually. <laughs> heartbreak and journaling, right. So I started um, writing um, when I was about seven or eight, my mother brought me um, those diaries, you know, with the key in it. Yes, and, I love those. Um, and so I used to write in those, and I still keep diaries that I've had since I was a kid. Oh, wow. So that's how I first started actually writing. Just any time I would go through something rough or something great. Mm -hmm. So that's what you would see in my diary, something rough or something great. Mm -hmm. There's no in-between. <laughs> right, right. Um, and then, um, so when I was just about to turn 40, just before I hit my 40, I guess six months before my 40th birthday, um, I went through a breakup. It was a rough breakup. Mm -hmm. And um, I really just did not know how to channel that negative energy. And, and so I started journaling, and then the journaling turned into, you know what, I want to write a book. I feel a book coming. Yeah. And uh, so I just turned that energy into actually writing a book. And then I was watching Oprah. And this is a true story. I was watching Oprah, the Live Your Best Life shows. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I'm sitting there, I'm in my pajamas, my hair's all over my head. Um, and you're going I'm, through I, this I've really? I'm going through this heartbreak. I've yeah. got the ice cream, and she's like... <laughs> live your best life <laughs> i'm like i'm looking at myself like this is not my best life mm -hmm. and what do i really want to do you know and 40 is always that time when you kind of think right. about right you're like very that. contemplative so, about mm -hmm. life and your journey so i said what i really want to do is be a writer something i never thought i could really do because you know it just seemed very otherworldly you know mm. a very otherworldly thing to but do. you had those thoughts beginning at what age Seven or eight when okay. I thought about when you writing. Okay. But not that I could ever be an author. Like make like a, a career public. of it. I never thought that I could do it. Mm -hmm. I didn't think I was capable. You know, I just didn't think I had the talent to do it. So you didn't study English mm -hmm. or anything like that? I really or did not. writing I mean, in I college? Took, I took, in, you know, the standard English classes that yeah. you have to take in college. But I never. But not as a major? Mm -mm, never took it as a major. Mm -hmm. um, I did have one teacher read uh, one of my writings in, in class saying I had a great voice. So I always did carry that little seed mm. in my head, but I, I never thought that I could actually be a writer. I really focused my career elsewhere. Uh, elsewhere so. Mm -hmm. so when I hit that point though, I was like just pouring all my feelings into the, into the story. Mm -hmm. And that's really how my first book the bum magnet. To, yeah, it was part of what I was going through at the time. It was part things that had happened in the past. It was mm -hmm. part things that had happened to other people that I knew. But it that's how that the bum magnet first came to 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 be. Mm -hmm. Okay, and and uh, we talked a little bit off the air about that writing process yes. um, and having people review it for yes. you and th let, let's talk a little bit about that. Yes, so um, so the bum magnet started with me just pouring my feelings, which really is what a first draft should be. Right. Just get it out of your head onto paper. Mm -hmm. And then um, I thought it was the most awesome thing ever written by of any course. author ever. Yeah. It was <laughs> certainly Oprah material. <laughs> so I, I entered it and Amazon used to have a contest, the Amazon Breakthrough Novel award mm -hmm. they had the contest and I said I'm gonna enter this one I'm gonna win and I entered the um, the contest and what part of the contest is having other people critique your work mm -hmm. <laughs> and the critiques were awful it was who does this person think why does she think she can write and this is <laughs> oh my god uh, she's trying to be a comedian and I mean it was just one horrible thing after another and so at first I went to lick my wounds and cried a little mm -hmm. and then I was like well what is what 
is really true about what they're saying. What what is it that I can take from what they're you know criticizing me about and put into my work to make it better? Mm -hmm. And so that was a quick flip. You right. know, I've quickly flipped that switch to uh, being wounded to actually using the criticism to make my work better. Mm -hmm. So that's that's what that contest actually started. And then after the contest, everybody's like, well, when are you going to get an agent? And <laughs> I was like, oh, that's what's next. So. Of course, you send it to agents, you more rejection. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I think I got like 100 rejections. I think James so Patterson said he had like 115 mm -hmm. or something like that. Yes, I had a 100 plus, probably a little over 100. Before I was like, I'm, you know, I'm finished with this. Mm -hmm. And um, and that's kind of when the, the, the light turned on. It was kind of my, my come to Jesus moment. Do you want to really be a writer and why? Right. And I felt like I had a message in that book that I wanted to share. Mm -hmm. And um, I said, I want to be a writer. I want to put this out there. I want it to make people laugh and think and really consider the choices they're making in their own lives. And so I said, I'll put it out myself. And that's you know, how I ended up indie publishing it. OK, OK. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I definitely want to fully tell the success story about your first novel because once you self-published it, you said after two months, it was just really, really gaining in, in popularity and reviews. You had over a thousand mm -hmm. reviews yeah. on Amazon. Well, well, a thousand sales. Sales, mm -hmm. sales mm -hmm. on Amazon. And then who came around to knock on your door and pick it up? Yeah, so after a lot of, um, after a lot of really good reviews, a lot of uh, black book clubs picked it up, um, and uh, and then I started selling it on Kindle, mm -hmm. and uh, I was one of the first, um, you know, kind of the the, the cheap ebook mm -hmm, in that mm -hmm. cheap ebook club, where you you know you try to get your books to hit those sales, and I did yeah. over the course of maybe I think from January to March I sold probably al almost five thousand books. That is awesome. Um, and so it was, uh, it was in March of that year that I actually got a phone call from an executive editor at a publishing house mm -hmm. saying uh, that we like to buy the book. And I, you, I, you could have picked me up off the floor. I was like, what? Right. Th this book that everybody said no, mm -hmm. um, that was rejected by all these um, agents, mm -hmm. um, somebody actually wants to buy it? I can't believe it. And so, um, so the the first thing the editor told me to do was get a get an agent. Of course, it was right. much easier to get an agent. After of that. course, I, I had an agent <laughs> within a couple of weeks, and then um, and then so uh, basically the agent shopped the book mm -hmm. around. Um, we got a few more, a little bit more interest, and then after it all shook out, I ended up with Simon and Schuster. Wow! Mm -hmm. And so that guy that broke your heart is now. Wishing, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. but you know the good thing, and, and I definitely want to make a point to say this because um, you know writing can be so therapeutic. It is. It was such a cathartic experience for me. Mm -hmm. It really helped me not only work through um, issues that I had, but when people were reading the book and I was getting feedback from emails from readers saying, "I just read your book." It really, you know, made me think about some of the choices I'm I'm making mm -hmm. in my relationships mm -hmm. or. I'm going through the same thing. Mm -hmm. I even got an email from a woman in Egypt who read the bum magnet. She was like, it's the same thing over here. <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious. It was true. Yeah. But, um, but I was like, you just, you don't even know who you touch. Right. And w what impact that has on people. So that's one reason I love, you know, one of the reasons I love writing is mm -hmm. because you do have an impact. Impact an impact you may not even know that you're having, but um, but it does change people. It, hel it helps people evolve sometimes. Right, it's right. A good thing. So um, I do want to get into the business of writing, um, yes. having self-published your first book, yes. and then how it transitioned to a major, and, and what you're doing now. But before we talk about that, I want to talk about your process yeah. in writing. So um, you don't have any quote unquote formal training mm -hmm. um, as a writer. Mm -hmm. um, you, you just have that, that natural um, talent. 
um, that is a very good place to start yes. for any writer. It's a good place to start, but it's certainly not all of it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so let's let's talk about your your process. So, and, um, and also, do ha, do you feel like it's changed from when you first started? Oh, certainly. Okay, okay. So <laughs> let, let let's talk about how so, that transition uh, and that journey. So when I when I wrote the Bum Magnet, I was it was very organic. It was mm -hmm. very. Um, you know, seat of the pants, mm -hmm. you know, writing by the seat of your pants. I was a pantser, that's what they call it. Yeah, yeah. And um, so it was how I felt, how, you know, if you feel moved to write something one day, you, you know, you let it all out. And if the next day you don't feel moved, then you don't write, <laughs> right? I mean, that you can't make a career out right. of this, no. right? Mm -hmm, <laughs> you mm -hmm. cannot wait for the muse in the, in the real world if you want to be a productive writer. So over time, I realized I had to get over this uh, pantser thing. Now, a lot of people live and die by it. There's nothing wrong for, uh, yeah. with it. But for me, for my goals and the things that I wanted to write, and plus me balancing uh, a full-time, you know, nine to five, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I had to have some structure to my writing time. Mm -hmm. uh, when I sit down to write, it has got to be productive because I just don't have time to like wait for the next moment to come when I might, you know, have time to write. So, uh, so that that pantser uh, process has definitely evolved to me outlining. Um, I always do like a very rough outline to start my workout. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't live and die by my outlines, but it does give me a place to start right. when, I, when I sit down every morning. Absolutely, a foundation. It gives me something to start with, and 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 a lot of times when you're stuck um, and you can't figure out where to go, you just write to the outline, mm -hmm. and then you can work it out later. Mm -hmm. When you have words on the page, you can edit words on the page, but you can't edit a blank page. Right. And so that's my goal, is to get something on the page that's in the neighborhood of what I was thinking. Um, however, if I'm in the middle of an outline and I'm writing a story and my character veers off and does something complete, if it's good, I go with it, wh whatever that is. Right. So I don't let uh, an outline bind me, right. you know what I mean? Yeah. But I do let it guide me and I do let it uh, allow it to help me stay productive. So that's, that's how I write now. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. that's, that's every book now, it gets, I set up in uh, Scrivener, you know, the writing program. Mm -hmm. They get an outline in Scrivener. It gets a loose, very loose outline, um, and and I write to that to stay productive. Okay, okay. Now you are a writer of spy thrillers as well as romance. Yes. Is your process different when you're writing for either genre? So I do start. Um, I I think the difference is. Uh, I have to approach it a little differently because, uh, you know, I had a career in intelligence, right? Mm -hmm. So for 20 years I've been in, in the intelligence agency and I, um, in, in the intelligence community. And so, um, so what I write about is really kind of connected to loosely based on things that happened in my career. Obviously I can't write about right. you know, cases and stuff yeah. that I actually worked on. Yeah. But because of that, I really have to be careful. Uh, so it's more of a free flow when I'm, you know, writing romance or something like that. I can mm -hmm. just go with it. But I actually do have to be very careful that my uh, my spy thrillers don't bleed into my actual career. Yeah. <laughs> career. I really have to keep them separate. Mm -hmm. So when I write an outline for uh, a spy thriller, I have to pretty much stick to that because that makes sure that I don't let things in my career bleed into into my work. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one thing that's probably different. And then the other thing I would think is um, it's just the uh, the speed. Uh, I usually will, uh, the spy thrillers take a little longer for mm -hmm. me mm -hmm. to write just because they're- Are they longer too? They're, they're a little longer, mm -hmm. so they're, they're much more detailed. Because they're unpacking. Much more complex. Yeah. There's layers and layers and layers in those stories. Mm -hmm. As um, the, I won't say my the romances are simpler, but they're simpler. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? It's not as complex as writing a spy thriller, mm -hmm. where you really have to start at a place and let pieces slowly come together. You yeah. know, people get 
the romantic comedy. You have to be more methodical yeah, about you have to the be approach. Very, and you really, it's really like putting a puzzle piece together. Mm -hmm. So that it all all adds up in the end. And the romances are a little bit lighter. And then they're definitely lighter. Yeah, and they're definitely, flowing. the puzzle pieces, you know, it's like a, it's the difference between the thousand piece and a ten piece puzzle. Got right. it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, it's a little easier to put together. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So um, going back to um, the self-publishing mm -hmm. piece, um, where, where you started off, where you did your own marketing and all of that versus um, being signed by a major, Simon & Schuster. Um, what are some of the lessons learned, things that you're taking into your, um, your new process of marketing your spy thrillers? Right. Uh, what, what are some of the lessons learned? things you want to share about that about either process so one thing I will say about being with a publisher is that um, what you can't do is treat it as if the publisher is going to do everything. do everything yeah no they're not um, <laughs> you really still have to do a lot for yourself um, you will have a support um, you know, they'll lend you the credibility of the brand to mm -hmm. like um, set up book signings, for instance, or things like that. But it um, makes it easier. They they don't necessarily well, set it up right, for they don't you. Set it up but for you. it make they but make it, it makes easier. it easier yeah. when you can say I'm with Simon and Schuster right. and I, I'm mm -hmm. setting up a book tour as opposed to, um, you know, with Podunk Publisher mm -hmm. and <laughs> and please can I sign my yeah. books? So. Yeah. So there's a d and there and there's also a level of quality that it's they expect with a um, with a publisher mm -hmm. you know that you know sometimes it's it's hit or miss with an indie publisher right right so I mean if you're a good indie publisher it's consistent but you know not every indie publisher is the same mm -hmm. so I think that's kind of part of the reasons why um, it can be difficult but but so that's one lesson learned is just Treat it, if, if you're going to be in the business of book writing and you really need to make money from it, you better treat it like a job. You better treat the, the marketing as, m you know, like a job as much as you do the writing mm -hmm. and the art of it like a job. So um, that was definitely a lesson learned there. Um, it, it really dispelled a lot of, you know, the myths. myths in my mind because I really did have this idea that you <laughs> that you write a book and you hand over the manuscript and you and write the next book and then you write the next and one everything and else will be done yeah it's magic you yeah. know the publisher makes it all happen no that's mm -hmm. not really how it happens mm -hmm. <laughs> um and but it, it does give you a little bit more freedom because i'm not the one that has to pick out the you know that has to pick out the art for the cover yeah i was going to ask you about like that. that um mm -hmm. You know, with with a publisher, how much control do you have over those kinds so of you things? So you too. So it was interesting. Um, so for the bum magnet, um, I did have say. I did have say. Um, they got some stock photography and did my first cover, and I was like, no. <laughs> it was so funny because um, you know, there's not a whole lot of sex in the book, mm -hmm, right? It mm -hmm. really is a romantic comedy, yeah. where the, it's um, it's more about the situations, mm -hmm. situational comedies, right? But um, so the first cover they presented had this couple like hugged up on each other, and <laughs> you know, it, I was like, somebody's gonna look at this cover and expect sex. It's not in there. <laughs> <laughs> so the cover was to get people interested in picking up the book yeah. and reading it. But then when you it, read it, you're like, it doesn't really no, match. No, it's not. It doesn't. Uh, it didn't match the mm -hmm. content. Mm -hmm. So I was like, that's probably not going to work. I said, and for that reason, you know, and if you have a good reason, um, they listen. Yeah. And when I told them my reason, I said, there's, there's not a lot of sex in the book. So, um, so they changed it, and then they put. Um, they had a, a full-figured model come in and do the uh, a model come in and do the cover for the first and the second book. Oh wow! Yeah, and so um, which was amazing. One that they actually because the c character is you know full-figured, mm -hmm. so that they actually used a full-figured model was like wow, she's you know beautiful. Yeah. And then 
that they got it for both was awesome. Mm -hmm. So yeah, mm -hmm. so I had the same woman on the, the you know, first the part one and part two mm -hmm. of the books. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. And okay. So, um, in addition to uh, what you said about, I guess, not having the starry eyes about being signed with uh, a major la uh, publisher, mm -hmm. um, would you say that maybe another, I guess, lesson or eye-opening experience for you was in the way that you were received, generally? by um, the readers, by book clubs? You know, honestly, that whole I, I, that part, uh, I really didn't feel a whole lot of difference in, okay. in my reception. Um, because the book had become so popular before, before. Mm -hmm. it probably would have been different if I had uh, you know, published first and then went indie publishing, maybe it would have been okay. a different experience. Okay. But because they had al always known me as an indie publisher and then it went, it was, it was just an additional layer of my publishing experience, really. So, mm -hmm. so that wasn't a big experience. But I will tell you, the big experience was really just learning to understand the finances of the deal that you're getting into, mm. okay. right? So how they pay royalties, like a lot of authors don't understand how they pay royalties um, when they sign that contract. Mm -hmm. and, and they don't understand that, you know, if, if your book sells for $10, that you're just getting a small percent of that. Right, yeah. And, and that small percent goes to pay. So it's not dollar for dollar that you're earning against your mm -hmm. advance, it's mm -hmm. a percent of a dollar mm -hmm. that you're earning <laughs> against your advance. You know, I didn't really, I didn't even care about the math of it at the time because um, I think I just wanted some validation. I was new. Mm -hmm. I didn't think I was a good good enough writer to start with. So when I got in, you know, into that deal, I was really looking for the validation. But it didn't really take me long to figure out, to feel confident mm -hmm. in the stories that I was telling. And so when I no, no longer needed that validation, I kind of got out of it. But that's a big lesson for authors to really understand. Understand the math of the deal that you're getting, to, mm -hmm. getting into. Don't just you know, sign away your rights because you know I got the rights back to the bum magnet from Simon & Schuster. Oh, so wonderful. they have one book. So they still have my other, the second book, uh, okay. Right to be Wrong. But, um, but you know, that's a, that's not an easy, it's not an easy thing to do. Mm -hmm. So when you sign over the rights to your book, <laughs> make sure so that you, you understand, understand what you're getting into. Right, you right. Know? That's a very good point. Mm -hmm. That's a very, very good point. Script writing. Let's talk a little bit about that. Um, so you're in the process of working on a script for the first book? I no, that one I finished. Actually. Okay. Okay. Yes. So th I wrote a I wrote a script for the Bond Magnet. Honestly, it, my my I always see my books as movies before I write them in books. Outstanding. Sometimes I write them in books to flesh out the story. Mm -hmm. So normally the the visual of it comes into my yeah. head before the words actually come in, into the Same page. Same here. Same know? here. So. Um, so really, I wanted the bum magnet to be a movie before I wanted it to be a book. book but right. it, then it ended up being a book. Mm -hmm. So um, I went back and wrote the movie. And uh, really, for me, um, I, it, there's not been any like major effort to sell it. I enter it in a contest here or there. But mm -hmm. um, really, for me, I wanted to understand the process. I really wanted to understand. Um, that you know how the um, beats, you know how mm -hmm. to write the beats and and how to write the acts, and you know what the arc, the character arc is yep. supposed to be, things mm -hmm. like that. So I really wanted to get and and I for me I really felt like it made me a better book writer. You know, understanding how to write those acts because you have to write that in books too. Right, you, you exactly. have to write the arcs in books. You have to write it all. So it's just that you get to use more words mm -hmm. in a book, and then you have to be really stingy with those words when you're writing a script. Yeah. So, so it's a really good it's a really good just as a writing exercise. So what's next? 
So um, right now I'm working on my, another romantic comedy. And the next few uh, are going to be romantic comedies with one spy thriller in the series, the next J.J. McCall book. I'm about halfway done with that. I really just need to finish it. Mm -hmm. So um, a joint deception is coming soon for people who are waiting okay. because I know they've been waiting for a while. <laughs> um, and then, um, but my next romantic comedy is called Troubles in, Troubles in the Cards. And it's about a um, black greeting card companies, right? Two competing black greeting card companies. Mm -hmm. And a um, and a woman owns one company and her ex-boyfriend owns another one. So he owns like a Hallmark. And she owns like a, a company called Keep It Real Cards. <laughs> <laughs> if you can imagine, <laughs> she keeps it real with the cards, right? So okay. uh, the messaging is hilarious. So it's really comical. Kind of like a Jill Scott kind of, you know, she has uh, in mahogany. Um, yeah, but it's not Walmart. mahogany. It's very snarky. You okay. know, it's much okay. more snarky than, okay. than mahogany cards. <laughs> so, um, but, but she owns this company and uh, she finds, you know, she kind of starts it uh, out of this dream that she wanted to do with him, but he broke up with her, so she had to do it on her oh, own. Mm -hmm. And then five years later, he acquires her company. And so there is obviously the, the clash mm -hmm. because he's bought her company. <laughs> and his, his motives for doing it mm -hmm. are murky, very murky. So there's, n there's not really an understanding of why you know, he did it, mm -hmm. and and all she wants to do is get her company back. back yeah. So yeah, so that's kind of the the foundation of that story. But what really makes that funny, in addition to the relationships, but you have these creative characters that create these keep it real cards <laughs> that are hilarious, and mm -hmm. then um, you know you just have that. Um, I think it's something that I haven't really seen explored a lot before. For, for black characters with yeah. greeting cards, right? Yeah, so, yeah. So I thought it would be something interesting and new. And we're actually, um, this is a two-part series, so we're gonna segue into part two. Um, and until next time, catch fire. Dreamcatchers, welcome to another exciting season of the Writer's Haven Show. I'm V. Helena, your host and executive producer. The Writer's Haven Show was created to showcase the passion, process, and projects of writers of literature, television, and film. In our third season, we've expanded our programming to include songwriters. We hope to inspire and motivate you with the season's lineup of artists. Stream our shows on iHeartRadio, Spreaker, iTunes, Sonos, SoundCloud, Spotify, Alexa, and YouTube. We drop new episodes every week, so subscribe and never miss a show. Find me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Tumblr at Author V. Helena, and visit our website at www.writershavenshow.com. See you in the Haven, and until next time, catch fire.